Yo, you want to know the truth? There's no sure shot way to really get through opiate withdrawal painlessly unless you have methadone or if you're on, let's say, fentanyl and you have like oxycodone or something stashed away that can cope the withdrawal while the fentanyl or heroin leaves your system. The issue is, is when you're on the internet like this and you're searching around for videos and shopping, there's some type of a motive behind it that's actually getting in your way. I'm sure you've heard of uh, doctor shopping, uh, all types of shopping. Well, there's also YouTube shopping. And most of the stuff in the YouTube store is free. You find whatever suits, whatever scenario that you're in. So if you're in this scenario, you're going to type in keywords to fit your scenario. And that's understandable to an extent. You have to understand there's probably nearing 9 billion people on this planet by now. So uh, statistics and all that are kind of hard to base on such a massive scale because all of these people... Maybe not all of them, but a huge majority have been on medication in their lives. And their withdrawal or their detox or their taper or whatever, it depends. I mean, it really depends on how you're seeing everything. Which makes me go back to my point about YouTube video shopping. You know how you have music, you know, artists that you uh, like? You know, you like this one or this one or this one or whatever genre, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Same thing with these withdrawal videos. You find one person and then another and then another and you, you you are loyal to these channels and that's cool dude that's fine but like if you're looking for a crystal ball answer as to what your withdrawal is going to be like you're just you're actually making it all freaking worse you know what i mean you're making it all worse by doing that uh it depends on the person and their content and what they're trying like the message they're trying to put out are they trying to get viewers and subscribers and they don't give a shit about you or they're their viewers at all you really don't know their motives you know what i mean that's the, that's the sickest part is you don't know anybody's motives so you might get better information off of somebody's videos that aren't that high quality or all this music is transition music and all this shit you might get better videos off someone that does it basic you know basically like me i do stuff basically i don't use all that fancy shit but my point is is I've done it before, you know what I mean, in the past. I've gone to different videos and channels, oh, yeah, I like this one, like this one. Then I'm like, what am I going to decide? How am I going to feel? It sounds fucking crazy, right? Well, all of us are, not all of us, but all of the people that are doing that are starting to go a little off their rockers, and you don't know what to think anymore. You know, you don't know what choice to make in your head. And another issue is... Just like addiction, dude. One thing you gotta learn when you get clean and sober is you can't have it your way all the time. Like you, you cannot have shit your way. It's not gonna happen, dude. No matter how much you troll, comment, hate, I hate what you said. I don't give a fuck. You can't have everything your way. And there's nothing you can do about it but accept it, internalize it. No, not internalize it swallow it digest it and shit it out there you go but i understand your stress about your withdrawal i understand there's factors that play into how you're going to feel one is what are you using guarantee you you don't even know what the fuck you're using in this point if you're in the fentanyl heroin business you probably don't know what the fuck you're actually using two what analog of what are you using I guarantee you, you probably don't know, which is fine, because that's what the street life is like now. You don't know, unless you're getting medication prescribed to you, you don't know what the fuck you're taking. So, that's why I mentioned in my other video, the leg test. Just wait and see how long it takes for you to get fucking sick, that's it. Wait until you get sick. And then, you see how long, and then you do it again. And you notice it's like the same time frame, six hours, eight hours, whatever that's your time until maybe half of it's gone out of your system you can tell what you're working with you know what i mean you gotta know if, you, if you're really wanting to do this shit and if people are going to comment down below and say shit like this doesn't work you're going to be miserable you're going to be so miserable what the fuck you're supposed to be happy are you supposed to feel happy and cozy during this shit is a doctor tapering you off street opiates 
No, they're not. So, the person's going to either have to go the methadone route, or the buprenorphine route, or an alternative opioid or opiate route to cope the withdrawal symptoms of all the other substance leaves your system. That's just it, man. That's it. There's this... Or you can taper off. You know, I like tapering off. I, I think tapering is a great method. I always mention it, and I don't give a fuck what anyone says. If you're gonna bitch in the comments and blah, 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 he's telling you lies, wait a second. Because last I checked, telling somebody to take less of whatever they're taking, which is a higher risk factor if they're taking more, so I'm telling you, take less. And you take less, and then you get to a point where that little bit less that you're taking is actually fucking working. Like, it's keep getting you not sick. You know what I mean? Like, it's... If you're going to, like, get a batch or whatever the hell you're getting, if you're tapering, it doesn't matter if it's strong or weak. It doesn't fucking matter at this point. Because the taper process is the fucking same. It's not rocket science. I'm talking to the... I, I went back in my comments, and I saw some people... On other videos, oh, this this method is terrible. Uh, I'm like, well, 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 listen, are you fucking clean? How the fuck did you get clean? If you have any genius insight, fucking share it. That's what the fucking comment sections are for. Share your shit. Tell people what your experiences are. This is my channel. I'm going to tell you what the fuck I have experience with. If you don't want to fucking hear it, there's a whole fucking YouTube archive full of videos you can go to and fucking watch. If you want to be picky on who the fuck you're watching... Go watch someone else then. Trolling on addiction channels, unless the person has a negative motive and they just want views, money, subscribers to get their shit and keep getting high, go ahead and keep donating to those fucking channels, doing whatever. Go ahead. I have this channel to give information off, based off what I know and what I've done, what I've told others to do, and they've done it and succeeded at it. Others that have just taken it into their own hands and took the information I gave and they're like, look, it worked for me. What the fuck? Do you, what are you going to complain about? You, fuck off at this point. Anyway, back to my original, original, original point. When you're YouTube shopping like that, I'm telling you right now, unless it's a, a really genuine person making the video that really wants to see people succeed and doesn't want to, you know, who doesn't really give a shit about subscribers and all that and is not giving you bullshit information i mean there's a lot of bullshit information out there i mean the opiate world the benzo world a lot a lot of bad information and this out there it, it's not but for the opioid opiate world i mean it's a t to get off any of that shit you have three options taper off switch to an mat med Unless you're on an MAT med and you gotta taper off. Or switch to another version, like a longer acting version, like if it's heroin or fentanyl and you have oxycodone, like I said, oxycodone, whatever. That, that, that's another alternate route to do. I don't care what you say. Ask any doctor and ask any anybody that knows this. They'll tell you, yeah, and we're not supposed to tell people, go out there and do other. So I'm just telling you the different ways that you can get off of whatever you're on. So. If you want to YouTube shop and, oh, I don't like this one. Like, that shouldn't be what this process is about. It shouldn't be about well, whose channel is perfect. I, I get it. You want to be in that comfort zone. There's a comfort zone that you have in addiction that you don't want to fucking leave. You, you don't want to leave it. You want it to be right there and look straight in this direction forever. That's what it feels fuck. I swear that's what it feels like. You don't like change in addiction. You don't like change. So you stick to your comfort channels. You stick to whatever person you look up to. You you stick to what... And that, that's all right. I mean, you can stick to the... But are you getting the right information? One. Two, are you actually ready to quit? And do you really have self-control? Because you don't have to have self-control to start getting clean. You learn self-control. That's why I say... And I have said, start living sober while you're not sober yet. Start, just use just to feel okay and then go about your day. And, and don't think, you know, try to not use, try to not use. Until it's time where you feel like you're sick again. Then you use a little bit, just a little bit, just to feel okay. 
you'll know in your head, all right, I feel okay. I'm not high, I'm not looped, I'm not this, I'm not that. I just feel fine. Then you go about your day again. Then it's time to use again, and then you use again. Then you feel okay again. Then you're gonna start getting tired of that because you're gonna be like, well, you know, I'm really sick and tired of just like using just to feel okay. This is like getting old now. Now you're used to getting up, taking a shower, brushing your teeth, whatever the fuck you were not doing in addiction, you're starting to fill those gaps in. Think of those gaps. You're not doing this, you're not doing this, you used to do this, you used to do this. Start doing it, start doing it, start doing it. Shit will change. You cannot see it now because you think you're going to have to sit there and fucking die for fucking five to ten days in, in agony with withdrawal. That's what you're thinking. Your, your brain is, your brain and your mind are both telling you that you're going to have to sit there and that's not, it doesn't have to fucking be that way. It does not have to. You get put into a fucking hospital. You were in an accident. Motorcycle, car, whatever. And they put you on a morphine drip. Or a fentanyl drip. Whatever the case is. You're not going to leave that hospital shivering and shitting and shaking, are you? No, you're not. Because the doctors are treating you as a trauma patient or someone that's going through severe pain and their ideal you know goal is not to get you hooked on opioids or opiates or painkillers so they're gonna wean you off taper you off uh, switch to another to get you off the any method that I've mentioned they're gonna chances are they're gonna do one one two of them I don't know it, it's simple it is really simple the the principle of all this shit is simple doing it depends on the person this isn't a one size fits fucking all so that's another thing stop this is it's not gonna work he's just lying to you am i fucking lying am i lying i dare one of you motherfuckers out there matter of fact yeah you know what this is a dare for three fucking days do the three-day challenge I want you to only fucking use when you feel sick. And don't use a lot of whatever it is you're taking. And what you're taking is on you. It's nothing to do with me. It's just from my experience. For three days, only use when you are sick. You're going to save time. You're going to save money. You're going to learn more self-control. And after that, you're going to feel fucking great and better about yourself with a natural dopamine rush because now you're doing shit that you never thought you could do within a three-day fucking span. And you're also going to notice that you're not getting as sick. You're not getting as sick. You're, you're going to... Day one, you might... It might be a little rocky. Day two, these opiates are fast acting on the street. So crazy different results can happen within three days. I'm telling you right now. By day two... Probably you, you, you're going to feel half in between. Eh? And by day three, you've probably let a lot out of your system. If you can do that three, six, nine, twelve, 12, do that eventually. If you could pass that three day challenge and go to six, to nine, to 12, you will probably not realize how fucking great you are. And then. From there, you're probably not going to want to go as hardcore as you've been going. Because, well, it's going to feel like a mental journey, like a beautiful, oh, this is great, I'm, uh, 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 but the reason you're feeling this great sensation and feeling is because you've been tapering. You're not crashing your fucking brain. If you crash your fucking brain, you're going to end up, it, it mirrors the recovery if you crash really fucking hard and you're doing two bundles a day and you get on to nundles a day yeah you're gonna feel fucking like shit dude your, your brain is going to crash simple fucking shit if you don't allow it to crash like you start to crash and level out start to crash level out start to that's what getting sick using the feel only a little bit to feel okay start to crash use a little bit only to feel okay start to crash use a little bit I'm not going to keep reciting the same fucking procedure over and over again. Personally, I want new stuff to talk about. I, I, I mean, maybe addiction related, maybe whatever else, I don't know. But as for this specific topic, I stick by my fucking word. Taper, taper, fucking taper. 
because I can argue with you motherfuckers all day that want to argue about it. If you don't have the self-fucking-control to do it, put yourself in a fucking detox. I don't know what else to tell you. Put yourself in a fucking detox. Because that's what it's there for. But, if you can't do that for whatever reason, and you say you're too broke, but you're not too broke because you can afford all the stuff that you're using, then taper the fuck off. You're, you're, you're gonna be saving shit, you're gonna be gaining self-control, slowing the fuck down, you're gonna be not as sick anymore, you, you, you're... And keep drinking fucking water throughout this three day, six, nine, twelve process. Keep pissing in between. If you feel like you're fucking sweating a little bit, that's good. Use enough so you're pretty much okay. And keep at least one or two withdrawal symptoms that you can bear. Because let's say you got all the withdrawal symptoms, right? You take just enough, a little bit, right? And you're left with cold and clammy sweaty hands and uh, a little bit of back pain but other than that everything else is like okay keep those withdrawal symptoms because it keeps you in partial withdrawal which means your tolerance is dropping until your next dose your tolerance is dropping and that next dose you're still gonna go only a little bit you're not gonna use a lot because if you use a lot you're gonna start stockpiling that tolerance right back up on top of each other. that's the the purpose you take medication you take benzos anything you take let's say twice a day take it in the morning take it in the afternoon you don't take it at night the half-life of that first dose that you're taking that's going to now you're gonna right before the half-life can right before the medication or the substance leaves your system completely you're now adding another dose on top of that and that cycle repeats, so your tolerance is building up like a fucking Jenga tower. That's when you have that built up, and it starts to leave slowly. Withdrawal. Simple. So, when you're using just a little bit, and you're letting yourself have a couple withdrawal symptoms that you can bear, because you're in control here, keep them, keep drinking water, keep urinating it out. By three days, for your tolerance is going to drop dr fucking dramatically. But, listen before I end this video. Do not go fucking overboard once you get to this point. Because, yes, your tolerance is going to drop dr fucking dramatically. I'm just being honest. I'm not trying to soup you all up. I'm not trying to give you false things. Ask any doctor. Ask him. I don't care. Your tolerance is going to plummet. And that's what you want. You're not going to crash. You're not going to go through crazy amounts of pains if you went through cold turkey. But you'll come out a better person. You'll have self-control. More, uh, more, um, confidence. You'll have more confidence. You have a lot more fucking confidence. Because you feel like you can separate yourself from the substance and you don't have to keep it on you. Keep it around you. you all this shit's going to, I'm not even going to tell you all the things that are going to change. I'll let you guys get <clears throat> that experience yourself so you can pretty much be like, oh, have what, whatever happens to you, whatever good positivity, any, posi <clears throat> any positive anything that happens through this is for you. It's unique for you. It might be different than what I learned when I was doing it. It might be different than what she learned. Like, Who the fuck knows? But being picky, YouTube shopping looking for these imaginary fucking fairy tale way, <clears throat> ways that are going to be, you know, be painless and all this shit. It's only going to be painless if you fucking, I mean, painful if you pretty much allow it to be. You know what I mean? You have to surrender to it. You know, you have to surrender to it. You can't just jump into this with the mindset of not quitting and still want to use. You're not going to do it if you still want to fucking use. If you really want to quit and you're only stuck because of the sickness and nothing fucking else, then try this. Try the three-day challenge. Try the six-day challenge. Try the nine-day challenge. Try the fucking forever challenge. You'll get there. If you can make a whole B last you a week, dude, that's another fucking tilt my hat to you moment. Try it. Try it. I dare you motherfuckers to try to fucking taper off your shit.
because you can do it. I know people that have done it. I've done it. The only issue with me was that when I did it, I knew I had to do it because I didn't have enough of what I needed. I knew my guy wasn't going to be around. I knew this and that. So I literally had to savor what I had, which turned into a taper. Like I was like, huh, I'm using dramatically less and I'm just making it to my, you know, until my guy gets back. But, and then I realized I'm like, I'm not getting as sick as I was getting. Like I, this is weird. And from there, you know, I wasn't ready to quit, but I have done it successfully multiple fucking times is what I'm trying to tell you. So anyway, I'm not going to go any longer with this video. I do want to make more. Um, I want to make another video. I have some ideas. If you have any ideas, write down below. But like I said, don't get picky. Don't have expectations. Have no expectations. It's not going to kill you. But... I believe in you guys. You can do it, all right? Keep your fucking head up. And trolls. Shut the... F no, I'm just kidding. Uh, trolls, I don't give a fuck. But you get my point? All right, good.